Welcome everybody to BKR Farm Soils for Life YouTube channel and uh, thanks for joining for another episode today. Today we're going to be diving into the water holding capacity of conventional till versus no-till. A little research project that I did over this uh, with these winter months using some high-tech soil sensors from Meter Group. And it's getting warmer, thankfully. The springtime is around the corner. It's getting to be about 60 degrees outside. Next week's supposed to bring in some colder weather, but today it's still really nice. I, I got out and I flew the drone a little bit to show you some aerial footage of the two test fields that I compared. And then I will dive into using some zentracloud.com, which is part of the meter group soil sensors that will help us analyze some of the data to show which is better at holding more water. So let's dive in. Thanks for joining. So I took two fields that I have on my farm that were relatively close, about a quarter of a mile apart. One is a field that I had just harvested potatoes and planted a winter wheat crop. The other field, I had a barley in it last year and I used my stripper heads to strip the stubble off, leaving as much stubble as possible, and I too planted winter wheat into this field. They both were planted about one day apart. Literally, I finished one field about midnight, and the next field I started and finished the next day about noon. So virtually the same planting conditions. And when I have potatoes in my field, I use these sensors from Meter Group called the ZL6 Data Logger and then I use a couple different types of soil sensors and I have them all winter long sitting in a shed and I decided this year I would instead of waiting till the next year's potato crop to use them I would deploy them out into these two fields so how I set this up is I established three different locations in each field a north south and middle uh, sensor and I took them out on the same day about October 27th and I installed the sensors and I used what they call the Teros 21 and the Teros 10 sensors. They're just a basic volumetric water content sensor to measure VWC, volumetric water content, and also soil temperature. And I submitted these at 5 centimeters, 15 centimeters, and 30 centimeters, or approximately 2 inches, uh, 7 inches, and 15 inches. Um, 15 inches to see what the deep water and moisture content would be. Two inches to keep an eye on what uh, the planting depth water content would be. And then the middle seven inches is about that middle root zone area. And so I went out and deployed them and then I've monitored them all winter long to see the different curves. And so we have some different, some pretty cool information. So let's pull up ZL Zentra Cloud and show you what I found. What ZentraCloud is, is how you get the data. So their, their data loggers are cellular based and they have tons of different options in, Jul in June. I put these in my potato fields and I plan on doing an in-depth, more in-depth review of meter and show you how all of them work. But for right now, they have a data logger that's cellular and it sends up the data to ZentraCloud. And this is how you observe and monitor and graph your information. So we're gonna log in here for a second. So when the system loads, this is the kind of image that you have. So I have my whole farm here, and these ones are the GPS locations of the sensors last year, but this is the fields that I did this little research project on. So you can see three here, one, two, three. This is the no-till field, and then one, two, three. This is the field that's following potatoes that would simulate more of a conventional tilled field. And then over here, you can see conventional middle, conventional north, conventional south, no-till middle, no-till north, and no-till south. And you can click on each one of these individually, and it pulls up what the most recent reading is. So this one was given 21 minutes ago. And then you can see here, um, if you click on this one, it'll bring up what this one was. And But uh, the, most, the easiest thing to do is over here on the left, you can click on the charts. And it's going to take a second to load, so we'll give it a second to load, and then we'll jump back in. So here we go. You can see conventional mill. Oh, I dropped the knee off. I should have uh, added that. But so this is 
Even though it says conventional metal, these maps are all comparison. So in addition to the soil samples sensors that I have, there I also have these climate sensors that this top one is comparing air temperature in two different locations. And so you can see over here on the right, uh, like I said, in June I'll give a more in-depth, but it gives you what the average temperature has been, the lowest temperature, and what the average temperature has been since I deployed them back on October 26th. So now we're going to zero in on this reading, soil moisture at 15 centimeters. So the three green ones are the conventional till. The three red ones are the no-till. Now it was pretty interesting when we first deployed these, how the conventional tillage seemed to be holding more moisture. And, but then, however, in the end of January is when the snow really started to melt. And as it melted, the 15 centimeter moisture levels, the conventional till really dropped off and sat there for quite a while. And the no-till kind of stayed up and it kind of had a less gradual drop off, but this is what's really interesting is as the snow has completely melted, as you can see in the drone footage, the no-tills have jumped up a lot. Here, we'll, we'll zoom in. Here, you should be able to zoom in and just view here. So the no-tills really started to rise and they've held it. And in just the last couple of days here, the Conventional tillage are catching up, but they're not holding as much water as the no-till, especially this no-till middle is, you know, 38% is its highest reading, where the conventionals, you know, 25.8%. So the conventional tillage has the lowest, the no-till percentage as the highest. Now, I am a researcher at heart, and so I know that this data is not... There's no, you know, connection. There's no correlation. There's just some interesting numbers that I'm, that I'm giving. So let's go to the deeper moisture. So this is the soil moisture at 30 centimeters. The colors still represent the no-till versus conventional till. And you can see how much more moisture is being held at the 30 centimeter depth in the no-till. You know, this, this one here is the only one, the conventional till south is the only one that's in the no-till range. All the rest of them here are bouncing around 25%. So this no-till middle got almost up to 45% moisture at the 30 centimeter depth. And to put that in perspective, during the summer when I'm watering my potatoes and keeping them nice and wet, um, the highest they usually get is in the, the 30%, 26 to 30%. So right here, without irrigation, just capturing the snow runoff, I, the no-till is clearly, clearly holding more water. So like if you look here at the averages, conventional middle, the average is only 22.7%. Conventional north, 21.5%. Conventional south, 28.7%. All the no-till averages are above 30%. So the no-till is holding a lot more moisture. Now, when I switched to no-till, everyone told me <clears throat> that my soils aren't going to dry out in the spring. They're not going to warm up. They're going to stay cold. You're going to severely not be able to plant grain. And if you do, the seed's going to suffer because the soil is just too cold. Well, check this out. This is all the way back October 27th when I deployed them. Look which color is predominantly on top. The red ones. No-till is consistently warmer. Over the entire thing, over the entire course of the study, the three no-tills are a degree warmer. If you want to zero in on just the last month, we can do that here. And the difference isn't quite as drastic, but you can still see that the deep temperature, 30 centimeters, the no-till is still warmer. Now if you go to five centimeters, there you go. So today all of the soil is, the su surface soil is bare, but you can still see that the no-till north, the red ones are still on top. They're still far warmer than the conventional tillage over the course of uh, 
This is just from March 16th to March 20th. Now, water content at the surface. So how wet is it where I'm gonna be putting my seed? And once again, the red is on top. So everyone says the soil is gonna to be too dry. Everyone says the soil is gonna to be too cold. Well, check that out. The red ones are still one to the 1%, every one of the no-till is at least 1% higher than the highest conventional till. But then when you look at the other two, it's astounding. Pull this averages back up. You can see 18% on the conventional north, 19% conventional middle, and we're at 26. 7% more water capacity, water sitting in the top two inches of the no-till stubble versus the bare stubble. So you can see here in just the study that it's not scientific proof. I'm not going to go publish this. It's very anecdotal. But there is still some proof to show here that no-till is going to, one, hold more water, two, it's going to get warmer and hold the warmth better, and three, you're going to have water lasting longer. And so hopefully you've uh, thought this was pretty cool to see how the relationship between no-till and conventional till throughout the winter. And like I said, I will be jumping back on in June to show you how I put these sensors into the field. And uh, hit the subscribe button. Please become a subscriber to Soils for Life so you can learn what we're doing here to protect the, protect the future of our farm and to help pre preserve the soil that we've been blessed with. And so like I said, hit the subscribe button and check out our next video.